Once again, Black Cube TV brings you to another corner of Kingston, Jamaica. Today we are going live with Marley Mar, aka Ziggy, from Acton, London, England. He has a story to tell about how he ended up back in Jamaica. A lot of people may remember him. This is his story, live from downtown Kingston. So, what's your date about? My date of birth is 1st of February, 1980. So how old did that make you? That makes me 40 years old. 41 next month. Okay. So how did you end up back in Jamaica? I ended up back in Jamaica. Let's put it, let's put it this way. By not really um, following the rules, say that's not following the rules. I'm not moving accordingly. If you understand what that means. Time in prison before you came down, or did it, yeah. how, how did how did it happen? You want to give us a little rundown how it happened? All right, let's put it this way. I leave here when I was about what ten years old. I leave here when I was about ten years old, and I leave here to go to England to bet better myself. Here in Jamaica, there ain't much going on in the country at all. There ain't much at all going on in the country at all. There ain't nothing going on here. Everybody's kind of out for themselves. Dog eat dog here in Jamaica. When you travel from abroad and you come to Jamaica or you get deported and you come to Jamaica, I, in my opinion, you're a totally different person from the other people around you. What I mean by that is because, I, because you speak different, you act different, Everyone's going to look at you and think, oh, you, you think you're better than them because of this and because of that. But it's not really the case whereby you think you're better than them. But the transition from moving from Jamaica to England or to a different foreign country, it changes your whole mannerism. It changes the way you speak to people, it changes the way you talk, everything. But anyway, like I said, I went there when I was about 10 with my brothers and sisters. And like my mom said, she brought us there to better ourselves. A lot more opportunities was there than there was here, than there is here. I didn't really know what Jamaica was like either. I lived there when I was young. But, however, anyway, I went to England and everyone that thing started off well as it normally does in every, every new country you go to. It's all fun to begin with. But then you get into it and you know, you meet new people you can meet the right people and you can meet the wrong people. In the game, I can't really, I won't really say I meet wrong people because in all honesty, I don't blame nobody for anything on my deportation or nothing at all. I don't blame nobody but myself. I can't blame nobody but myself. I don't blame none of my friends or anything. Should I have got involved in a lot of the things that I did? Maybe I shouldn't have. I could have taken a different path, done something a lot more better with myself. But I chose the path that I chose led me back here. And unfortunately, it has to be said, truth be told, because we don't beat around the bushes or bite our tongue or hide the truth for nobody. We tell you exactly how it is, not how it might be. And it's foolishness here. It's foolishness here. Really and truly, like I said, my advice to anybody really and truly that's gonna leave from Jamaica and go to a foreign country is not really get involved in all of the foolishness that's going on, the badness, the drugs, whatever, whatever, but to just go there, do the right thing, get your education, get your subjects up and live life. The drugs game, gun, whatever you might call it, it's all fun. But then after a while, it all dies down. It's like a, it's like a spliff that we all roll up. We roll the spliff up once the spliff finishes. It's just like back to square one, back to reality. That's what the whole life, that's what the whole game is like. Some people come out on top, some people don't. But in all honesty, to me, it's not really worth it in the long run. Do I regret the things that I did when I was in England? 
that caused me to be back here. To be honest, I don't regret the things that I did. Because to be honest, if I, say, if I was to say I regret the things that I did, like for example, let me, let me put it this way. When you get involved with illegal things, guns, drugs, bad company, whatever, it puts you in a situation whereby you go close to niggas, okay? You go close to your friends and you develop kind of friendship with them whereby you won't make nobody trouble them and if anybody troubles them, you will defend them as well as the police as well. They, they're no exception. So, it's like while you're there, that obviously happened. Even my friends commit a crime and I can help them to get away with it, I do that. At times, I even, I even remember coming back, getting away from a crime, stealing a car, coming back to the scene to get just to get my friend. Was it worth it? Do I regret it? I regret it a little bit because I got arrested when I came back for him. But I don't regret meeting him and I don't regret going back for him because, like, in all honesty, throughout everything in this game, if there's one thing for sure that everybody can say about me and will never deny, and I give thanks as well, nobody can ever say. I ever get convicted of any kind of rape in nobody's children or anything like that. I've never been, no one can have me down as no informer, no snitch, no rat or nothing like that. So through it all, even though I'm with this disappointed with the outcome of being deported, regardless of that, in the past now, I know for a fact, like I said, at least no one can call my name the whole 20 years I've been in England selling drugs, doing whatever, whatever I'm doing. No one can ever say I was no snitch, I was no rat, I was, you know. I have principles, I have morals, and I'm glad that didn't break, didn't break the, the, um, the line, didn't cross over and did any kind of those foolishness. I believe in everything that you do, you must have a principle and morals and a limitation. Um, whether it's legal business or whether it's illegal business, everybody must have their own limitation. I wouldn't advise this, this, this game to anybody really. I wouldn't advise it to no one at all because at the end of it... Okay, let me put it another way. When you go to England, you meet a lot of people. You meet everybody. Friends, girlfriends your brothers, sisters, everybody, you're close with everybody like this. You see, once you get, once you get taken away from them or once they get taken away from you, there's a saying, out of sight, out of mind. So everybody that was your best friend before, as time go by, they completely forget about you. So no matter how close you was with them before, time go by, all forget about you. Even the girls them, even the girls, the girls will love you. The girls will love you. Once you're there, the girls will love you. They will do anything for you, okay? As a matter of fact, some of my ex-girlfriends, they might watch this too. And at the time, they would have done anything for me and I would have done anything for them as well. But as time go by, I'm here now. They've all forgot about me. It is what it is. Everybody has to move on. And that's one of the parts of our um, life that we have to try and live with. So, now I'm here in Jamaica. I don't really keep family and friends and stuff like that because the transition, I don't think it really, I don't think the transition is really the, it's not the same. I find it very difficult to communicate with my own brothers and sisters in Jamaica because of the way I speak and the culture and the way I was brought up, it's completely different. So, overall, I just give thanks for life and freedom. For it all, I just give thanks for life and freedom. You see, there's one thing I know for certain throughout all of this, whether it's bad man from Jamaica, whether it's bad man from England, you hear about all the duns from this area and that area, whatever, whatever. The majority of them, unfortunately, 
or either dead or locked up okay the majority of them are all either dead or locked up some still on road fortunately thank god they still got life still okay by the end of it it's not really worth it if you listen to the stories of some of the real dons and bad men in jamaica that's been through jamaica some of them are in prison now and they will tell you if you speak to them they wish they didn't go down the road that they did before some of them i've read stories in some of them and some of them just, just wish they could have somebody to communicate with they're locked up in some prisons right now whereby they're not even in communication with nobody you're locked up like animals not allowed to communicate with nobody at all so you see at the end of it all at the end of this game i'm not gonna lie of course some people get through of course you see some people with big houses and big cars whatever whatever but like end up dead in prison and like myself unfortunately deported as well so i think whoever is doing this documentary whoever came up with the idea to do these kind of things i think it's a really really good idea because a lot of us we're out on the street and we're having fun with all our friends and everything girls and everything and we think this is a life it's gonna last forever but as time goes on your best friend's gonna meet a new girl have a child have a baby and everybody's just gonna start separating everybody's gonna be start going their own way so who was your best friend before and you only was going for a drink and a smoke and party all the time it's only going to be a phone call away now because they've moved on with their life and where it was a phone call every week or every two days it will move on to a phone call every month and then every three months and then every year to the point now you start making phone calls to your people abroad and you hear the phone or oh, the number you've dialed is not being recognized or you're calling and calling and calling again and nobody's answered that's when you realize that you know what it's really is true out of sight out of mind but through it all i always stand on my own two feet i always stand on my own two feet i ain't suicidal or anything like that so even though i'm by myself and i'm deported in jamaica it is what it is it is what it is you know what i'm saying with all the, with the things that have gone in my past, I call them my scars. I call them my scars. The things that have gone in my past, the bad things that I've done, I've called them my scars. But I don't really feel too much about it because you never see a king in the jungle without no scar. Every king has a scar. Do you understand? And though my scars, are, you might see a little one, two visible. My real scars and pain are inside here. But that's for me anyway. That's for me to hold and just go through and understand it is what it is. The life that we chose, the path that we chose in life is going to be the result of how we end up 5, 10, 15 years from now. And my advice to everybody and anybody that's doing the illegal, going through life the illegal way is a really try and weigh up the way they want both the pros and the cons don't just sell drugs sell drugs sell drugs and don't put out no money and not save and things like that plan just plan ain't nothing wrong with it just plan plan for five ten years fifteen years twenty years down the line because the same friend that you have around you right now are doing the same thing they're planning they're planning they're saving their money and they're making plans for 10 15 20 years down the line so if you are not making that plans you know what's going to happen you're going to get left behind okay you're going to be left behind anyway like i said again i just give thanks for life and for freedom that's the main thing yes i got deported but how i see it i'm a returning resident and where i go from here is up to me where i go from here like i said i still got life and i'm free that's the greatest thing greatest thing in life life and freedom yeah i think that's right life and freedom 
So since you've been back in Jamaica, how many of your old old associates and friends have you been in contact with? I see you touch on them out well, of out of mind. Well, okay, let's put it this way. I had a lot of friends and you're gonna have a lot of friends. But there's the thing we call like um the real ones and the fake ones. And let's say out of a hundred, I'm only in, 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 in contact with like five, six and so-called friends that you would have done things for before, done things to have them freed from prison. You'd have committed a crime to help them or whatever. They ain't even nowhere in sight no more. As a matter of fact, sometimes they even your own family deserts you. For, and I hope he's watching this too. Because I don't bite my tongue and I don't hide on talk or nothing. But even your own family will let you down when it's them that you expect the most from. Okay? I have a lot of family, brothers, sisters. But I got one main brother from the moment I went to England. It was like that never left his sight he could never call me for anything and I don't turn up to help or assist in any way shape or form he's my little brother and throughout, throughout it all ain't none of my friends family or nobody can tell you that I didn't look after my brother like he was a twin brother and I didn't know him from Jamaica I just knew him when I went to England and I've been there now for what, over 10 years and I ain't never spoken to that nigga once I ain't never smoked to that nigga once. And I looked out for him like he was my twin brother. Imagine that. Like he was my twin brother for 20 odd years. But I ain't gonna bite my tongue anyway and hide and talk. I don't even care if he watches this and he's embarrassed. He's a damn Judas. But, and like I said, as you go through life, you realize that probably even mom turned out to, your mom even turned out to be a Judas once you get deported and stuff like that. You see, you have to go through life and experience a lot of things to realize who's real and who's not. And, and like I said, I give thanks my mom and dad is still alive and they're still looking out for me and everything. But like I said, a lot of the times, even your father, even your mother, your brothers and your sisters turn their back on you. And if I was suicidal, I would have been gone. If I was suicidal, the same water that we're looking at over there, I can't even swim, but I would have gone in there. But I'm too strong for that. Too strong for that. My team is too strong for that. I grew up with, survived with, and maintained with. It's too strong for that. So, ain't gonna see that happen. Ain't gonna see that happen. Do I wish I could go back? Yes and no. Because I had some real, some real close friends, some real close friends abroad that I would really love to see again. I would really love to see them again. And most of all, I'd really love to see my nieces and nephews again. Through it all, even my brother that gave me the little nieces and nephews that I miss so much, I don't even care about him. But my nieces and nephews so much, Mom, Dad, my little brothers and sisters, I really would love to go back and just see them one more time. It would really be, really be cool to just hug them one more time and sit around the table and have a Sunday dinner or something like that. It's when, when you throw away things and you're in a position all by yourself, you realize the thing that matters most, the small little things that, ma that matters most, that mean a lot in life. Walking to the park with your, with your son, your daughter, your girlfriend, your wife, all them little things, spending time together, picnic and stuff like that. It's really nice, close bonding stuff. You miss all them kind of things when you're alone. But like I said, it is what it is. And what don't make you strong, what don't make you weaker can only make you stronger. So, I'm trying to go stronger now.
So how have you survived since being back in Jamaica? How I survive? Minding my own business, keeping myself to myself, and just trying to do my own thing. And I don't keep friends. Nah, I don't keep friends. I don't know if I'm not, I don't think I'm allowed to even say any kind of bad bad word or bad language on the camera. But over here in Jamaica, friend kill friend. No matter how much you drink, smoke, laugh with someone, smile with him at one o'clock. Man, he could even give you three, four girls to go lie down with at one o'clock. If you finish with them by two o'clock, the same guy will turn around and kill you. Plan to kill you. So, I don't really keep friends. And the same person that you explain the situation to is going to agree with you. So, yep, yep. That's how Jamaican people stay. That same individual is like that too. Do you know what I'm saying? That same individual is like that too. So, that same guy is going to tell you that, oh, don't go there. Oh, don't keep this kind of friendship in Jamaica because this guy is like this. That same guy too has got a bad mind and stuff like that. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good word as well. I'm glad that could word come to my mind because you see, bad mind... That runs through Jamaica like dirty water. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all over the place. A lot of them pretend like they don't have it. A lot of them have it. Okay? And a lot of, a lot of us Jamaicans as well, a lot of us are unfortunately quite illiterate. So we get it confused with like what bad mind means. You know, and stuff like that. So people start calling other people bad mind not realizing that they have the same bad mind in them. It's a messed up situation unfortunately, but it is what it is. But like I said, in order to maintain, I just keep myself to myself, do my own thing, and just try and maintain and um, maintain and um, survive with, around people that are uplifting. Only people that can uplift me now. Anybody that's negative that can bring me down, talking to me about anything negative, I ain't got no time for them people no more. You have to be doing something positive and can uplift me right now for me to even sit down and or even have a two minute conversation with you right now. I ain't got time for that no more. So, yeah, like I said anyway, I'm just here anyway, just doing my own thing. Me, myself and I, keep myself to myself, do my own thing and I don't, I mix but I don't mingle. Not into the friend friend thing. And you see even the woman them, damn, the woman them are just as bad. Because the woman is what we're supposed to lie down with and feel comfort with. But the same woman that you lie down and feel comfort with, she gets up and tells you that she's going to the toilet and she's going through the front door and have some other niggas come in and tie you up and all types of shit. I ain't been through that shit, thank God. But I've heard it happening, I've seen it happening, and it's exactly what happens over here in Jamaica. It's a very complicated situation. Is it because yeah, I speak differently as well, as you can tell? It's been so long in England right now, I can't get rid of the accent. I just can't get rid of it. And to be here in Jamaica and have an accent, problems. Problems. Everybody looks at you differently. But it is what it is anyway. This is where I was born. Didn't grow up here, but I'm back here now and it is what it is. I give thanks for life and freedom again. So looking back at your life, all your trials and tribulations, all, all the shit that you've been through, you have any regrets is there anything that you would have done differently is a friend that you wouldn't have parred with something that you wouldn't have done is there anything like that that does any of them thoughts cross your mind yes and no because there's a saying there's a saying right if only I did know if only I did know if only I did know I don't want to say yes I regret it and I don't want to say no, I don't regret it. It's kind of a complicated situation because like I said, when I was in the game, I helped out a lot. I helped out my friends, whether it was out of court, out of prison, whatever may be saved his life, whatever may be. I don't regret saving his life. I don't regret helping him out of prison. You know what I'm saying? So those kind of things, I don't regret helping him with those kind of things. However, but some parts of the negative things, Maybe I wish I could have changed it, yeah, but overall, it's complicated to say whether I regret it or don't regret it. Because if I regret it, that means I regret helping out my friends and stuff like that when they were in trouble, whatever, whatever, etc. So, it just is what it is, man. It is what it is. It is what it is. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. It is what it is. 
So especially now that we're in these terrible times that we're in with the COVID and everything, how have you been surviving for the last year or because it's already been it's already been hard. COVID's already making it harder for everybody else. So how are you finding it? Let me give it to you honestly, okay? I got this mask on and all this foolishness, but I don't believe in all this COVID-19 stuff, okay? I believe all this government is all, all the governments are all putting together them own different kind of things to like, I think they're all coming up with something. I think they're all planning something, honestly. I think they're all planning something. I don't believe in all this COVID-19 crap, okay? I wear the mask because certain areas you can't go to without the mask, but I personally, in my opinion, I don't believe it's no COVID-19, whatever they want to call it. They're doing something, there's something out there, but they're calling it what they want to call it. And they're giving, giving us the name of what they think it is. But I don't really, I don't think it's something else. I don't really think it's this COVID thing, but anyway, like anyway, I'm, I'm mixed, but I don't mingle. I keep myself to myself. I keep my sanitizers and everything up anyway, just in case and, you know, God's will, I can continue, you know, and you take me through it until it's all over. Yeah, God's will. So being born in Jamaica, going to England at a young age, being deported back to Jamaica as a grown man, how was the transition? The transition was... Um, how long did it take you to adjust? Did you have anyone here that was... I've been here over 10 years now and I still ain't adjust. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say because I grew up in England. I didn't grow up in Jamaica. And I talk very little. I keep very, very little. I don't have no friends, as a matter of fact. I don't even keep friends in Jamaica. I have associates. I have associates. So the, the, the transition is really like a real, real, real reality, you know changing like but it's really it's really hard it's really hard but like i said it still can't come to terms with this with, with certain things i still haven't really adjusted here properly because a lot of the things them like i said i grew up in england whereby a lot of the things them here that just don't make no sense i just can't understand it it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world but the people over here make it a horrible place make it very uncomfortable but it is what it is how i see it it don't really matter too too much where you are as long as you have your wife and your kids and stuff and you just you know you're just living for them and just maintain it is what it is anywhere you are after that it don't really matter yeah so anything you want anything else you want to say anybody you want to shout out to Obviously, this is your story. You're giving it to them. Anybody I want to shout out to, I just want to shout and holler at my people, them that remember me. For everybody that's hollered at me and check and make sure that I'm okay since I've been here, I holler back at them for sure. M enough manners and respect for sure. And it has to be said, females that I hurt in the past. I have some really, 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 really nice, loyal females around me, surviving and helping me through everything that I was going through. And over my years in England, I met some really nice females. I may have done something to hurt them. I hurt their feelings. And for that, I solemnly apologize to them if they ever see this or if they ever watch this. I solemnly ap apologize from my heart. I apologize and I'm sorry. But it is what it is now. But I'm so sorry.